Hello, welcome to Advancing Your Genealogy with DNA. Is that why we're here? Yeah. Yes, excellent, we're all in the right place. All right, my name is Anna Swain, and I'm very excited to be here to talk with you today about one of my favorite things to talk about, which is DNA, and how do you use it to help you understand a little bit more about yourself and how you fit into your family tree. So how many of you have taken an Ancestry DNA test? Wow, quite a few of you. How many have not? Oh, a few of you. Okay, guys, this is your chance. Uh, you might be sitting next to a cousin, so you can find all that out through DNA. Quick intro about myself. Um, also, I also want to welcome those who are watching online. Yes, the live stream. Welcome. Hopefully my family members are tuning in from Washington and Idaho and Nevada. I, I bribed them that they should watch me and see what I do. <laughs> I'm like, that's okay. You don't have to come to Roots Tech. You can watch it online. So welcome to everyone online and for all of you. I know it's Saturday and you probably have learned a ton at Roots Tech. Um, how many first timers? Awesome, that's great. So hopefully we'll see you again next year. So a little bit about myself, I work at Ancestry. I've been there for almost, yeah, about five years. And before Ancestry, I worked for a company that was trying to figure out how the world was connected. It was a nonprofit research company that was doing genetic research. And they wanted to be able to see how, you know, if DNA testing really could work. You, you could take a DNA test and you could find something out about yourself. And I started doing that in college. And I, I, when I heard about the project, I was like, wow, this is amazing. I want to be a part of this. And so I started it and that's taken me on this path. So I've seen how the, the power of DNA has advanced through the years and where we today can talk about it specifically about certain family lines and what we can really find out about our own story. So we'll jump into it. This is our quick agenda. We're gonna talk about genetic inheritance. I think this is one of the most important things to understand when you're trying to advance your, your research and using DNA to do that. Genetic inheritance, we're gonna do a quick overview of that. We're gonna do just a brief uh, review of what you get from your DNA test. So I know some of you have already taken the test, but we'll do a quick review for those who haven't. And then we're gonna, oops, and then we're gonna um, understand your DNA matches. This is really where the rubber hits the road when you're trying to use DNA to advance your genealogy or use it for your research. How many of you have brick walls? Hopefully everybody, right? That's why we're here. <laughs> yeah, we can use DNA matching to help break through those brick walls, find out who our great grandfather was or who he married. We'll do that through DNA matching. And then, you know, what specific questions you should have about using DNA for your research and next steps. So hopefully all of you came to this conference with a question in mind. What do you want to find out? What do you want DNA to help you discover? If you haven't had a question, you know, think about it because the, the more questions you have, the more you're going to get out of your own DNA results. So quick review of genetic inheritance. Here are my fourth great grandparents, Timothy and Agnes. So we're just gonna do a simplified version of what their DNA looks like. What you're looking at is a pair of their chromosomes. And you have blue for, my, for Timothy, you have purple for Agnes. So what happens when they have a child? Um, their, their daughter Hazel inherits DNA from them. Now we don't know which segments of DNA or which parts of the DNA she gets. It just gets shuffled down and then passed to her. And this is what happens from generation to generation uh, as, you, as, you, um, uh, as more people have kids. So my grandmother gets uh, a little bit of their DNA, my mom gets a little bit of their, her, their DNA, and then they pass it down to me. So a segment of their DNA, Timothy and Agnes, gets passed on to me. I am a living, walking record of these individuals. Because I can take, test my DNA and unlock that, I, you know, I have that uh, DNA from, from my parents, my grandparents, my great-grandparents. And so when I get my DNA tested, I'm getting my DNA that I inherited from them. But if I look at my sister's DNA results, that same piece of DNA that I inherited from my grandparents may not show up in her. This is, this is very important to understand. And so this is why siblings' DNA results can look a little different because maybe she didn't inherit that same piece of DNA. Or um, you're matching. If you've had other family members tested, you may match to a fourth cousin that maybe another family member doesn't. 
or vice versa because of this concept of you're only inheriting so much DNA, but sometimes it's not the same pieces. And so getting additional family members tested helps you unlock that. And so when I look at genetic inheritance and you're looking at how you know, the, the DNA gets passed on from generation to generation, it gets mixed up before it gets passed. So when you look at two siblings, you know, mo mother and father have a child, it gets, it gets passed. They look at another sibling and then it could look a little bit different. Doesn't mean they're not related. Uh, a lot of people will say, well, Anna, does that mean, you know, maybe your sister isn't really your sister if your ethnicity results look different? And you share about 50% of your DNA with a sibling. Okay, so there's a whole other 50% that you don't share that could then match you to other cousins or it could tell you, um, you know, a different region that, that you didn't inherit that segment of DNA or you didn't inherit that piece of DNA but your family member did and that gives you that unlock. So here are my three sisters. They've all taken the DNA test. Uh, I'm the fourth. I'm still waiting for my brother to take that test. <laughs> he has it at his house, and I really hope he's watching so that he feels pressure from all of you, right? You guys all want him to take it too. Uh, see, yeah, all right. Uh, <laughs> he has it. Uh, and so we get our DNA from our two parents. Again, 50%. 50% from mom, 50% from dad. Now, sometimes people come up to me and they're like, Anna, I inherited way more DNA from my mom's side of the family than my dad's side of the family. And I said, impossible. <laughs> you actually get 50 from mom and 50 from dad, but when you go back a generation, yeah, maybe mom gave you a little bit of her mom's DNA more than her dad's DNA. So the statistic probability is that you get, that you get about 25% of your DNA from your grandparents, but it varies depending on what you got. Again, I showed you that example, it just gets shuffled down and passed on, and we have no control over that. And so this is really important to understand when you're evaluating your DNA results, when you have a specific question in mind, you're like, I want to solve my, my DNA question, um, but maybe your DNA alone will not be able to answer that question. Uh, so getting other family members tested might unlock that for you. So that's genetic inheritance. Now, what we're gonna go forward talking about, we're really gonna dive into the experience, and you're gonna probably have questions like, how do we do this? How does Ancestor provide me this? And how do they know about this and this and this? And that's great, I hope you do have those questions. And I just wanna give a shout out to our science team because it's a lot of what they're doing that powers this, that powers the matching, powers the ethnicity. You talk about these regions, how do we know these people came from these different places? Well, our science team uh, is growing and growing, as you can see, um, you know, quite a few brain, quite a few uh, members on the team, and a lot of brain power. Some of you might not know that we actually have a scientific advisory board. These are in individuals in academia who review some of the research that we do. So when we're publishing uh, in, in scientific journals and things like that, they help re uh, uh, review some of that information. So you can trust the fact that a lot of, you know, what we're doing behind the scenes is coming together because of uh, the brain power of our science team. Okay, so let's get into it. Let's do a quick review of what you get from your, your DNA results. Um, we'll jump into your ethnicity estimate. So here we have my results. So you can see on the screen, 67% Great Britain, 22% Irish, and 10% Scandinavia. I'm sure a lot of you have already looked at your own results and you're thinking, okay, yeah, it might be a little bit different than mine, or you know, how do you interpret this information? So the reason why Ancestry can tell me that I'm 22% Irish is because they've, they have population data from 150 different regions and even more uh, when we get into specific migrations. So you think about it and you're like, okay, so you take my saliva sample and you compare it to those different regions that we have data on. And then you give me my unique ethnicity estimate. So this is what I inherited from my two parents, my four grandparents, and so on and so forth. But what does it look like when I get another family member tested? So I'm gonna show you my aunt's, my, well, she's my great aunt, so my, my dad's, mother's sister, my maternal, my paternal maternal grandmother, uh, sister, she took the test and her results look a little different than mine. To be expected, right? As you think about genetic inheritance. So she, we can tell her she's 31% Irish 
Um, and she's 27% Great Britain and 21% Scandinavian and Europe West and so on and so forth. But I want you to look at the region right underneath Ireland, Scotland, Wales, this Connaught, Ireland. We, can't do, we don't only just tell her she's 31% Irish, but where in Ireland she came from. Um, and if you click on that, it takes you even deeper into where in Connaught, Ireland. She actually is from Galway. So her family somehow is connecting to this region. Now, I don't have any uh, documentation into this when I first got the results. Thankfully for DNA, it's actually unlocked this for me. But this is only on her DNA are we telling her she's from Galway. Okay, it's not using tree data from my, my, my aunt's DNA results. This is, is through the DNA alone. And so all of a sudden, you're opening up this new world of finding how we're connected to this particular part of Ireland. It's not just a percentage anymore. This is actually a place in a city and with people who are connecting me. How many of you saw the keynote today? Yeah, we talked a lot about DNA uh, and it's getting, this is an advancement. This is a huge advancement, not only just to tell you you're Irish, but to tell you where in Ireland. Uh, it's very, very powerful. So now I can look at this and I can learn a little bit more about not only looking at the DNA, but looking at, you know, specifically that highlighted area that you can see on the screen. That is the area, the people that I'm connecting to strictly through DNA. So you can click on, you know, you just really explore this. You can see the timeline at the bottom. You can go into specific time periods of what was going on with these individuals. Uh, who were they? You know, why were they moving around? Or maybe why didn't they move around? And it has this really rich experience of uh, a lot of more information to give you that insight. So I use that. I leverage that to look at why I would potentially be connecting to this part of Ireland. And I went actually to my tree and I saw that in my tree uh, uh, I had the census record. And I didn't look at it really before. You know how sometimes you're just evaluating you know, certain research and I saw that there was a discrepancy in the census data. On one census it said they were born in Ohio and on another census they were born in Ireland. And I thought, oh wow, okay, well maybe you know, trying to evaluate those two documents and looking at the DNA, now I can say, okay, this particular family line is connecting me to Galway. I'm gonna go look there. I'm gonna start looking at the cousins that I have from there and see how I connect to them. So um, when you're evaluating all this information, like I said, you can click on the different timelines and then we pull in historical context. So we partnered with researchers, experts in the field to pull in this historical, doc, uh, historical content to give you this rich experience of not just your DNA and not just your own tree information, but also this historical information all on top of one each, uh, uh, with each other in one place to view this whole experience. Uh, and so really spend some time going into your own regions, clicking on the, the timelines and, and exploring this. So I want to take you back. Uh, so when I'm, I'm looking at this page, there's actually a way for you to directly see how many matches you have to this particular region. And when you click on the highlighted box, you can actually see how many matches you have. And I have over 400 DNA matches. Now you're thinking, whoa, do I have to go through each one of those matches to see? Um, some of these are gonna be more distant matches, but still connecting you. You share DNA because you're connecting to this particular area. Well, so I clicked on it. I was like, I'm gonna explore this. I'm gonna see what I can find out. So when I click on it, it shows me by region. So I'm just looking at Galway. You can see the filters at the top and I'll, I'll get into the filters uh, in a little bit. You can see I'm just looking at cousins who also connect to this region of Galway. And my three top re uh, cousin matches, um, actually when I look at their tree and I look at the ancestors born in Galway, I get these three different maps from each of those um, ancestors. And if you feel like you're getting a little lost, it's okay, we're gonna take this step by step um, as we go on. But I wanted to show you this complete picture of how I used my DNA story, my ethnicity, these regions to help me connect to the different places. And so I can now go explore these DNA cousin matches and see you know, who were those people, try to find the common ancestor and then uh, bring it, bridge it back to my own tree. Uh, okay. 
So by getting other, as you can see, hopefully this was a good example, this was how you can get other family members tested and the value that it provides uh, as, you, as you do so. I did a quick chart, just a you know, quick chart in uh, Excel, and I took all the family members that I have been tested, uh, my mom, my dad, and my aunt, my mom's first cousins, and my great aunt, so the sister to that grandmother that I was just showing you. And they all have provided me with different regions based on the DNA that they've inherited. So my mom and my dad, they add their two regions. Um, they're bolded because those are the actual regions I inherited. Um, but one of my sisters didn't inherit one of them. And so, you know, you have to play that game of, you know, certain family members are going to give you certain pieces to this big picture you're trying to, to figure out how you fit into. Uh, my other aunt, uh, she, her DNA connected to the central um, North Carolina region, which I know we have. And so my mom's DNA results confirmed our connection to Virginia, my dad here in the Mormon Pioneers, my aunt, the central North Carolina region, then my mom's first cousins. Look at all those regions that they gave us. So by having them tested, looking at their DNA, these are the regions that they added to. And I didn't have any of these regions in my DNA alone, but my mom's first cousins did. And then you look at my, my great aunt, she provided the, you know, the, Gal, the Galway region that was a huge unlock for us to figure out how we were connected to you know, jumping across the pond and getting our connection to Ireland. Because oftentimes we think, okay, how many of you, think about your tree for a second and think about, okay, you know, how many, how many different places does my family come from, right? <laughs> she laughs, she's like, a lot. And it's an interesting game to play because then you think, okay, now what's the DNA telling me? And I can say that the DNA is confirming a lot of these different regions. But then getting a few key members of my family tested has unlocked new regions that I hadn't thought about before because my tree doesn't go back that far or I haven't discovered that from a particular family line. So getting additional family members tested is very valuable into providing you more pieces to your own personal story because maybe your DNA alone isn't going to give you the complete, um, complete story for each one of your family lines. So in this case, you can see a lot, a lot of value was added um, by getting other family members and they're all testing within the same database so that you can you know, cross compare and see that uh, for each region. All right, so we talked about um, a little bit about the matching. You know, I was able to look into Galway and see how many of my cousin matches were matching there, where were they from, what were they doing, you know, what information can I learn from that to help me with my own family tree. So let's do a quick review of how matching works, just so that we're all on the same page as we go forward. So those of you who have taken a test, you remember the little saliva sample that you provided, those who haven't taken a test, super easy. You provide a little saliva, um, you send it in to us. We take your DNA and then we compare it to the seven million people who are also in the Ancestry database. That's a lot of people. When I stood up here last year at Roots Tech, so it was almost a year ago, guess how many people were in the database? Ooh, good job, who said that? DNA kit for you. Come see me afterwards. Impressed. Well, yes, we had three million people in the database. We've almost, like, yeah, we have doubled. I can do math. <laughs> uh, we've, we've doubled in a year, and that's impressive. So if those of you who said you had taken the test, you're in the database, and anybody new coming in will get compared to you, and you, so you could constantly get new matches every week, every month, every year. So it's very valuable to continue to come back and see, you know, who's come in, what information do they have, you know, and you might be um, helping others as well. So seven million people in the database, we look at and compare the DNA that you have to each one of those individuals. And so we're looking at that shared, uh, shared DNA. So if we find someone that you share DNA with, then we just estimate a relationship based on how much DNA you share with any other individual. And that's when you get your list of cousin matches and we estimate that relationship. So once you're in the database, you're in the database and anybody coming in new uh, will get compared to you. And how we make these comparisons, the science team tells me, a lot of science, a lot of math. <laughs> and here it is to demonstrate. Uh, a, lot, a lot goes into this. Because you think about it, when you match with a fourth cousin match, you share DNA with these, this individual. Now the question is, who? 
who in the past gave DNA down through the generations that matches you today. And that is the power of using Ancestry because we have the tree data to help us figure that kind of thing out. So we'll jump, we'll jump into this. We'll, we'll jump into matching and evaluate, because I want you to think about, for the next you know, 10 minutes, think about these tools, how you can use these tools, what questions you have that are gonna help you use these tools to figure out how you're related to your cousin matches, because you can find connections on any one of your family lines. You know, it can be on your mom's side of the family this month, and it can be on your dad's side of the family next month, as long as you're staying engaged. But if you can learn these quick little principles, it'll set you on a path of being able to just continue and, and manage your matches and hopefully break down brick walls or, or discover uh, something new that you didn't know before. It doesn't always have to be an earth-shattering breakthrough on a brick wall. Sometimes you just find a cousin that has something new that you didn't have. So I'll show you how that works. All right, here's a list of my cousin matches. So you have my parents, they showed up, so good news, <laughs> right? Um, when I was younger, so I'm the youngest of, of five, and when I was younger, my brother and sister, who were closer in age to me, uh, they would always tease me that I got dropped off on the porch. So, and it was a joke, right? You know, you, you know uh, siblings do. So when I got my DNA results, I was like, look, there's proof. There's proof right here. Uh, so my parents got a DNA test done. They show up as my parents. I showed you the three sisters that I had tested. So how do they show up? They show up as immediate family members. So my sisters have taken the test and they show up as immediate family members. Now, uh, a couple months ago, I think it was, I got a close family member match. And I thought, oh my goodness, who's taking this test? I'm the one that's usually trying to recruit people. Um, I am that person that always has a DNA kit in their bag. Anybody else? Yes? All right, so you, we're not alone. Yeah, when I show up to you know, family holidays, events, I'm looking at who else can take the test. Because you can see the value of having one on hand where you can get more value from uh, someone's saliva sample. So this close family member popped up and I thought, oh my goodness, who's taking this test? And you can see uh, it's CL. Uh, you can have any kind of username out there, uh, and so I didn't know much, but then it says managed by Jeannie, and you guys remember my sister's name? Jeannie. So I knew it was her son who took the test, and I said to him, I was like, hey, why didn't you let me know? I would have, you know, helped you get the test and blah, 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 and he goes, I wanted to make sure that you weren't going to tamper with the results. I was like, hey, what? What are you saying about me here? Um, no, he, you know, I'm always talking about this. People are always asking me questions. He's like, I just wanted to make sure. And I was like, look, it worked. He's like, I know, this is cool. Um, so he's taking the test and then I had, so that's my nephew. Um, so close family members are, sorry, we'll back up. So close family members can be nephews, nieces, aunts, uncles, that can, they can drop into that category. So even though we say close family members, you know, keep that in mind of the different relationships. And this is really valuable to keep in mind when you think about first cousins. I've gotten a lot of questions here at the conference where people are saying, I got this first cousin match, I don't know how they're even related to me. Because you think first cousins, okay, you probably share grandparents. And I say, well, it's, you know, it, couldn't, it could mean several other different reasons. And even though it says a first cousin, doesn't mean it's just a first cousin. Take this for example. So I have two first cousin matches. The first one is Julia Swain, which is my, uh, my great aunt. And so she's my great aunt, but because of how much DNA we share with each other, it's saying we're first cousins. So keep that in mind um, as you're evaluating your matches. A second cousin really could be a, a third cousin and so on and so forth. So for example, uh, the second first cousin match is Jane and that's my dad's half sister. So she's my half aunt. So I have two aunts in this category. One's a great aunt and one's a half aunt. They both show up as first cousin matches. Extremely valued, valuable to think about as again, as you're trying to evaluate these different matches. Okay, second cousin matches. I've got four, well, I've got five, but I have five cousin matches, four of them, the one that's not highlighted, I actually recruited to take a DNA test. And they are my mom's first cousins. So they're my mom's first cousins, they show up to me as a genetic second cousin, but really, we are first cousins once removed. Woo, DNA kit, yes, I love this participation. 
Okay, so, but you'll see the one that's highlighted on the screen now, she doesn't have a family tree. Okay, so this is important. You're thinking, well, Anna, should I just dismiss this match? Like, no. And I'll show you exactly what you can do to help you figure out how you're connected to someone, even if they don't have a family tree listed on this page. So it's very invaluable just not to, to dismiss that. But keep in mind, again, most important thing to learn from this is that even though it says DNA second cousins, it could mean you know first cousins once removed, it could be a third cousin. We're just telling you the estimated relationship uh, based on how much DNA you share uh, DNA-wise. Okay, so now that you've gotten that, now you can kind of understand, okay, I understand genetic inheritance, I know how to evaluate my matching relationships, I keep an open mind about, you know, even though it says a second cousin, maybe it's a third cousin, maybe it's a first cousin, now you're ready to really dive in and use the tools uh, available to help you navigate through your DNA matches. So one quick thing just to make sure, because I've, again, I've gotten a lot of questions at the conference, so I just want to review. Some of the things we're going to talk about today, you have to have linked your tree to your DNA test. So how you do that, you look on the screen, you see your name, and then that red box right underneath it, see how it says DNA test shown to matches as Swain DNA, that's my username. And then it says link to Anna Swain. Make sure you've linked your test to your tree. Now you can only link one test to one tree. Uh, I know several people are like, well, I have two trees, what do I do? And what I recommend is creating one tree. Uh, so you'd have to merge, you know, if you have a tree for mom and a tree for dad, merge those two together and then link it to yourself uh, so that you can, because that's exactly how the, how the DNA is inherited. So you want to link it to yourself because that is how it go, passes on from you know, your two parents, your four grandparents, so on and so forth. So this is how you check it, make sure you've linked it, and make sure if you have multiple trees on your account that uh, you've linked it to the right person in the right tree. Do you have a question about this? Yes. Yes, so great question. So her question was, hey, I just bought a bunch of DNA kits for family. Awesome, because yes, you want to get more family members tested. Now, what do you do? How do you manage those different DNA kits? And yes, you can have them, each one of the individuals has to create an account, and it can be a free account, no problem. They share the results with you. And if you don't know how to share the results, uh, we have flyers at the booth, or you can look online. We have several help articles on how to do that. But yeah, you can link them all to just one tree even. So that's what I've done. So you saw all the people I had tested. I have one tree, I call it my DNA tree, and then I link everybody to that tree to use and leverage for research. So you can only, you can link many tests to one tree, but you can only link one tree to one test. So, great question. Okay, so here we go. Buckle up and let's go through each one of the, these because when, when, when I get to the case studies, I want you to know that I used every single one of these tools in one way or another. So these are the tools available to you to navigate through your DNA matches and really try to figure out how you're connected to other people uh, that are in your match list. So let's we'll start off with hints. Now, hints is a feature that's basically doing the work for you in a lot of cases, as long as you've linked your tree to your test. When you click on hints, it's going to filter all of your DNA matches by the fact that Ancestry thinks they have found the same common ancestor in your tree as in your matches tree. So how that works is you click on hints, and it's gonna pull the matches, and this is what pops up for each one of your matches that has a shared ancestor hint. So now I can see how I descend. So I have Thomas and uh, William Winter in my tree and Myra Clayton, and I can see how I descend from this common ancestor, and I can see how my cousin descends from this common ancestor. We both took the test, we both linked our trees, and now I can see that information. And so it's funny because I was actually at a conference in San Antonio and where I met this cousin because I was talking about our third great grandfather, and he said, that's my family. And I said, look, DNA, working in action right now. So those are all shared ancestor hints, and if you go back to your homepage, 
you can actually see how many shared ancestor hints you have. So right underneath all the pictures I blurred out for privacy reasons, you can see I have 109 shared ancestor hints. So I have 109 of my matches who have this experience where I can click in and see how we're related. Now again, this is a hint, so you have to evaluate it and say, okay, is this really how we're related? I always go in and look at their tree and then I see, okay, who do they have listed for their parent, for Thomas's parents or Myra's parents, just to make sure um, that we're, you know, we really have the same information. So that's shared ancestor hints. You can filter all of your matches by shared ancestor hints. Yeah. And the hints work only if they have put a tree on also. That is correct. So our question is, do the hints work? Hints only work if someone has linked themselves to their tree. So that's crucial. That's why I, ha I like stop, pause. Everyone needs to make sure they're, they're linking their, their tree to their DNA test because you're missing out on this. You're missing out. And if you've only linked yourself to your mom's side of the family, then you know uh, you're only gonna get hints for the mom's side of the family. So think about it. Think, okay, I need a tree that starts with me, that has my two parents, my four grandparents, so on and so forth. Because if you only link it to mom's side of the family, then you're missing out on hints from your dad's side of the family. So we'll just pause for one second. Um, so make sure you've linked your tree and um, you've linked it to the right person. Because I've seen a lot of people get really confused on um, potentially how they're related to people because of just the tree linking. They think then the matches are wrong. And the matches are strictly based on how much DNA you share with another individual. It doesn't matter, um, you know, tree, tree information. You got your match list. Now the question is, how are you related to these people? Then we use the tree data to help us understand that. How are you connected? What can you find out from that, that cousin match? Okay, so let's keep going. So we went over hints, now new. New is very simple, it's a blue dot. You can see every blue dot that you have for one of your matches, it's because it's new, you haven't looked at it. Uh, so you could actually filter all the matches by new and say, okay, let's see how many new matches I have this week, last week, so forth. So click on new. Um, and you can do all that. Start is something you actually have to do on your own. So some people use this feature several different ways. I had a lady tell me just yesterday, she said, I use the stars because I've had my mom tested and I can look at all the matches that I don't have in common, uh, or all the matches I have in common with my mom and I star all of them. And then when I look at a match that doesn't have a star match, I know that it comes from my father's side of the family. So starring is something you proactively have to do yourself and you can use it in a variety of different ways. I know others who star all their shared ancestor hints just to, to filter in that way as well. So that's up to you on your own as a way to filter through your matches. So the next one is mother and father. Now, you're only going to get these popping up on your list of options as long as you've had your mother or your father tested. So those are, that's the reason why you see mine is because I've had both of my parents tested. So I can click on mother and then it's gonna filter all the matches I have in common with my mother. And I can say, okay, because they share DNA with my mom, I'm gonna you know, go and look at my mom's side of the family of how we're connected and same with my father. Now regions, we already kind of talked about regions. You know, you can click on regions and it will show you all the regions that you have represented in your DNA and you can filter out all the matches who also have that same region in their DNA. And this helps you kind of target potentially why you're connecting. Is it because of a location um, that was, you know, that you hadn't thought about before? And so clicking on regions is another option. Now, this is one of my favorites. It's search matches, and this is where you get proactive. This is where you think, okay, remember that question you have in mind? You wanna solve this or that, or you wanna look at just how many people are in the database or you know, that you're genetically matching with that have a particular uh, surname or birth location. So once you click on that blue box, this pops up, and then it shows you how you can search by surname, by birth location, or by both. And this is pulling in, um, People that you genetically match with and, uh, you know, if, if you have any uh, common surnames or common birth locations on your match list. This helps a lot because I can say, okay, I've got a, you know, I don't know the, the grandparents for my Lauren Myers. 
I'm gonna search the database just by Myers and see what pops up. See who else is on my match list uh, and see what, you know, what information they have that I don't have. And so any one of your matches you're going to see, so let's say I search for Myers, um, I can click on pedigree and surnames and then I can click on view full tree. This gives me access to that person's tree and I can go in and, and do some research. Let this be your, one of your really good friends. <laughs> Let the view the full tree be one of your really good friends because you can have full um, access to their tree and see how you may or may not be matching. Because even if our shared surname is Myers, that might not be where the connection is. That's just what we have in common. So you can look at the full tree and get a little more clarity on uh, who and where you could be connecting. So that's your search matches. You can also search by location, just, just location. This is awesome for when you have a brick wall and you're like, I don't know what their surname was. I don't know who, who, who he was. You can click on, you can just search by location and be like, well, I last knew that they were married in, you know, uh, Ohio. So I'm gonna go look in Ohio and see if I have any cousin matches that are connecting there. And they'll pull in, as long as you've linked your tree, they'll pull in all the common locations that you have with any one of your matches. And remember that example I showed you before where I, I looked at all my, um, my cousin matches that are from Galway? I clicked on this and this is how I saw they all three had birth ancestors who were born in Galway because of this feature. And I've had, someone came to me last year, or sorry, I, I taught a class about this last year. I had someone come to me yesterday at the Ancestry booth and she said to me, I solved my brick wall using this tool. She's like, the maps are phenomenal. I had no idea that I could, you know, look at this and it could just present the information in, in a new light and I was actually able to solve my, who my great grandfather was by looking at just the maps and locations because she didn't know his, if he had changed his surname. And it turns out that he was living in one place, he was born in one place, has a family, uh, and then he moved, um, you know, I think it was in North Carolina, then he moves to Missouri a few years later, has another family, changes his name, and that's how she descended. And so she was matching with somebody with a whole other surname, she's like, how are we connected? And they realized they were actually uh, the, same, the same grandfather. Um, she had to do a couple of additional DNA tests, but lo and behold, this gave her the clue on where to go and where to look uh, for other places. Okay, so the next thing you can do with your matches is send them a message. How many of you have sent messages to your cousins? Awesome. Um, I recommend sending messages to cousins, but keeping it short, uh, keeping it simple and you know, saying a few lines, giving some details, especially if you know some information like shared surnames or shared birth locations, put that in there. That entices, I know for me, to say, oh, okay, I know, um, yes, I, I remember that, I remember that's part of my family, and then I'm more likely to respond if the message is, is shorter and is very specific. The other thing you can do with a cousin, like understanding you know, your cousin matches here, again, shows you the predicted relationship. That little uh, blue highlighted area, what does this mean? That actually, if you click on that, that actually gives you all the different scenarios of why you potentially are second cousins or third cousins. So click on that if you're you know, trying to figure out how you're connected. The other thing is notes. I was doing a lab before this where we were doing hands-on um, uh, teaching and only 10 people in the class of 75 had used notes. How many of you use notes? A few more. Okay, this is really valuable. And I know you know because you know, you've used them. When you click on one of these matches and you're figuring out how you're connected, well, go ahead and put in a note and see how your, you know, your, you, you, how your match. If you're thinking, yeah, this is, you know, this is on the Myers line. We connect uh, this. They have this surname, you know, the, from this location. Or maybe you already proved it out. Maybe you're like, yeah, this is, you know, second great grandfather William. Uh, we share that common ancestor. Add in a note because then you don't have to always try to remember <laughs> as you are sorting through all your match lists how everyone's connected. So at, really you know, take advantage of that feature. But the next, the next option for really understanding your DNA matches is one of my favorites. And that is this, um, oh, sorry. Uh, that is this coming up button here. When you're looking at evaluating your DNA matches 
and you see that someone doesn't have a family tree and you think, oh man, well if only they had put out a family tree, uh, you click on it anyways, don't dismiss it. Because when you click on it, you actually can see if they've had a family tree and they just haven't linked it to their DNA test. Okay, so click on it anyways. You can see that box down at the bottom. They actually have a tree on her account. So Bev, who I don't know who I'm connect how I'm connected to her, she's some mysterious second cousin, doesn't have a family tree, but she actually has one. So click on those, even if they say no family tree, because you still might be able to see how you're connected. Okay, but before I do that, I always click on one of the favorite features, and that is uh, shared matches. And that's that middle button right in the middle. And every single one of your matches has this as an option. So if you click on shared matches, what that's going to do is it's gonna pull in all of the matches you have in common with this individual. And you're thinking, okay, well, you know, how is that helpful for me? Well, if you click on that, um, it's gonna help you break down how you're related to Bev or insert whatever uh, match you don't know how you're related to. Now, because I've been strategic and then figuring out who I should have tested on, on, on in my family, Bev with no tree, I now know, you know, here are my shared matches with Bev, I now know Bev is also sharing DNA with my mom. So now, what do I know immediately? She's on my mom's side of the family, yes. She shares DNA with a second cousin. Remember those second cousins that I had tested? Well, my mom's first cousins. Now I know it's on my mom's maternal side of the family. And thankfully to this last fourth cousin match who has a shared ancestor hint, you guys remember those hints, they, uh, they can come in handy because you can use them as options or opportunities to anchor how you're connected to these individuals. So Bev with no tree, I now know uh, probably comes from this family because of the shared ancestor hint. So it's on my mom's side, my mom's mom's side, and my mom's mom's grand, uh, grandparents. Uh, and so, you know, going back to Bev and even saying, hey, you have, you know, you have, you, I think this is how we're connected, uh, can be very beneficial. So don't dismiss those matches. Uh, use these filters on site. Really start to you know, play around with these because these are, or what going, these are what's gonna help you unlock these discoveries by figuring out how you're connected to these individuals. So we did hints, new, starred, mother, father, regions. We did the, the search by surname, birth location, which is my, one of my favorites, and the shared matches. But really getting other family members tested just helps you break that up. And you can see as an example here, just watch what happens here. So when I got my dad's half-sister tested, and I go to my dad's half-sister match and I click shared matches, now it's gonna break up my tree and it's gonna show me all the matches I have in common with her, I know come from this side of the family because they all share DNA with her and that's the common ancestor is my great-grandfather. So now I know everybody on that side comes from that side of the family. All the matches I have in common with my dad's half-sister. My grandma's sister, I now know what all the matches I have in common with anybody that shared DNA with me and my grandma's sister, I know comes from the blue box highlighted uh, on that part of my family tree. And then my mom's first cousins, I now know, okay, everyone that matches me and my mom's first cousins, I know comes from that side of the family. So Bev with no tree, I now know, okay, because my mom's first cousins have been tested, I can really break up that part of my family tree. And then my poor grandfather, you know, he, didn't ha he had a sister and she didn't have any kids, so I'm using the tools that we just walked through to help me evaluate how um, I'm connected to that side of the family. But I want you to just think about it. Like this is one, of, if you don't remember anything else from the class today, I want you to think about this. How can you break up your own tree, getting certain family members tested so that you can leverage the tools like shared matches to figure out how some of these cousins are connecting to you? And so if you're thinking, okay, could I use a first cousin on my dad's side? Yes. Get that first cousin tested because any matches you share in common with him, you know now comes from that side of the family. And the reason why you want to do this is because it, it, it removes some of the guessing. So when you think about you, how many fourth cousin matches you have, you think, okay, but well, what side of the family is it on? Well, clicking, you know, getting additional family members tested really helps break up that part of your tree. So 
when you think, you know, thinking about that, thinking about who you can have tested to answer what specific questions you have, and then thinking about all the tools that we reviewed, I thought to myself, you know what, I'm gonna just put this to practice and I'm just going to go through and I'm gonna show you just a few things that I've learned uh, following the principles that we just talked about. So if you think about um, this guy, this is my Psalm Phillips. I actually know him, I've, I've done a lot of research on him, but I had a brick wall at who his grandmother was. So using the tools we just talked about, like shared matches and surname search, I actually, you know, this brick wall that I had, which I didn't know who uh, her parents were, I was actually to break, I broke through, through DNA, and I found out that she, uh, you know, her parents actually came from Ireland. And I had no idea that this was true because some of the census data that I was doing, was researching, was wrong. Um, and it, it, I had the wrong information. And so thanks to 30 of my other cousins who have taken the DNA test, I was able to unlock uh, that story in my own family tree. The next one, William and Sarah. I connected to a, a fourth cousin who actually had been back to the home of William and Sarah and told me why they came to the U.S. Now, I had done some research already about, you know, I knew they were born in England, I knew they came to the United States, but I didn't know the why. He had actually been to their house, he knew um, the, uh, one of the, the children because he was much older, and he unlocked that story for me. So I had already had it for Paper Trail, had the story, but I didn't know the why. I was able to connect to that cousin, he unlocked that for me. Um, the next one was kind of a fun one, uh, the Swain family line. Um, when I was doing some research, I was like, our Swains are so documented back to um, England. Uh, I know exactly my Swain lineage all the way down to me and how I fit into the Swains. But so I thought, okay, what else can I learn from DNA? What else can I learn from my matches about this? And so I, I, I did an experiment and I started searching around and looking at this information and found that a bunch of uh, Swains had actually applied uh, to be a part of the Daughters of the American Revolution. And I thought, oh, that's kind of cool. Something I hadn't even noticed before, but thanks to DNA Cousins, I actually learned that. The next one is uh, Mary. So with Mary, I didn't know who her parents were until, again, using the surname search, uh, looking at my cousin matches and the shared matches, I actually found out that Mary's parents, also born in in. Uh, uh, in uh, Ireland, thank you. I was born in Ireland. And you know, when I was doing some research and seeing what my cousins had in their family tree that I didn't have, because that's something you should do, just go and view that full tree, see their gallery information. I actually found a newspaper clipping uh, that my cousin had posted in her tree about the death of Mary. And I thought, wow, how did I miss that? How did I not get that? And so I went to newspapers.com, it's the best money I've ever spent, and I plugged in her name, and guess what? Five publications, five different newspapers had written about Mary's death. And thanks to that cousin who you know, gave me that clue, I went and did the research myself, and they talk about her dying at, 43, or at 34 years old. And they talked about what she did before she died. So thanks to newspapers.com, I was able to discover that myself, clip that clipping, and then it automatically imports it into your own tree on Ancestry. Super awesome. And I was like, wow, that's impressive that five different newspapers wrote five different versions of the story. But thanks to my cousin match and looking at their trees, I was able to discover that. Um, Sarah. I f went into a cousin's tree that I match with, with Sarah. She, they got several descendants who come from her. But in one of my uh, tree, in one of the trees I was looking at, it showed that Sarah was a twin. I would have never found that out in a census record. Sarah was a twin, the twin died three months later, Sarah survived, and luckily I stand here to be a descendant of her. Again, you just never know what you're gonna find out unless you start looking and start playing around with those tools that we were talking about because you can find discoveries on any one of your family lines and by getting other family members tested, you can unlock that, uh, um, that information. Here's a brick wall for me. Uh, these guys, I haven't found any unique discoveries, but um, I'm still working on them, still using the same principles and practices that we talked about before. Uh, and you know, you can just continue to come back and check uh, as the time goes forward. 
Now the last people, uh, I think I already shared this story, but Thomas and William Winter, I've had several cousins come up to me at several different conferences. I've met a lot of people who descend from this family, and that's been really exciting to put, uh, to see their lives. You know, I can tell you my story and how I came, you know, coming down that line, but to hear their story and how, and what they've learned about that family. So DNA can really be this awesome network of people that you're connecting with, finding cousins and you know leveraging that to like learn a little bit more of the details of your family story because it really is in the details that we're learning different things and that you can learn on any one of your family lines so hopefully that's kind of opened up your mind to think okay yeah what questions do i have who else can i get tested to help me find this out and what are the little things that i can learn sometimes it's not always a, a big brick a brick wall so things you can do you can start with your closest matches, really use those shared match filter to see what you have in common with, and then reach out to others and get them tested because that's gonna provide you with so much more value in looking at um, you know, specific lines. And then be patient, have fun, and continue to learn about all the DNA can offer for your own you know, advancement in, in genealogy. Read the Ancestry blog, you know, follow us on Facebook and Instagram and Twitter. We're announcing things, and if you wanna stay up to date, I recommend doing those. And then if you have a question, you're like, oh, what did Anna say about that? What did she say about uh, genetic inheritance? You can go to the support site and you can click on the help tab and answer, you know, type in any question you want and see how, um, you know, what I talked about. A lot of this stuff is online, so to help you remember that, you can find it at the, the support site. So with that, if you haven't bought your kit yet and you want to get, if you thought about someone, you, you're like, oh yes, I want to get them tested. Uh, I know the exhibit hall is open for a little bit longer, and so you can buy those for $59 out at the hall. Regular online, I mean, you're saving probably about $30 if you buy them here, and you get to enter in to win a, a trip to um, Ireland or, or Germany or Italy with our research team. So take this last opportunity to buy those DNA kits, and just remember, you know, you just got it little by little. I'm always telling this to my mom, I'm like little by little as you try to understand how you really leverage DNA. But hopefully with all those tools and seeing some of those examples, it's inspired you to do a little bit more uh, as, you know, as the next week or the next month and keep plugging away as you uh, do your research. And with that, we'll just end. So thank you very much for coming. Thank you. And I think, we might have a time for a couple of questions. So if you wouldn't mind, there's a mic back there, but if you, I, if you shout it out, I can repeat the question. Yes. Yeah, that's great feedback. You know, providing additional tools to help us sort through our mother and father matches. Because really, the idea is to break up your tree. So getting other family members tested to help you do that very wonderful feedback. Yes. If someone has a locked tree, is there any information that we can gather? Um, I've had people, I've sent requests to have people come back to research and see So the question is, you know, sometimes you're looking at your cousin matches and you see a little lock uh, icon right next to the tree. It says how many people are in the tree and then there's a little a lock icon. So with that, um, sometimes I'll try to figure out, like if I'm doing a surname search and I type in Swain and I see a few trees come up that have the lock profile, um, I'll message them and say, hey, I know that you and I have Swains. Is there any way you can, you know, share information with me or, um, you know, Sometimes they don't want to share their whole tree with you, but at least about the Swains. And I know that that helps out a little bit because then it gets targeted of like, yes, I know we're connected and I think I know what family line. So being really specific in, in the message. But that's why I strongly encourage everybody to have a public tree because if you and I match as fourth cousins, I don't even know where to start. Like I don't even know if I can help you or you can help me. So if you're thinking, oh no, I've got a private tree, what do I do? I would recommend you creating a tree that's public 
and making that your research tree that you use to leverage to try to find and prove out certain connections on your family line. So if you're thinking about that, you know, anybody who has a, uh, a public tree, any living information, that's all private and protected. So you don't have to worry about, you know, cousin match seeing, oh, my mom who's still alive, um, you know, they're going to see that information. If she's still living in the living part, um, she actually is protected. So yes, and then I'm going to give a couple of DNA kits out. I had some shared matches that should have shown up, but they didn't show up. Um, I kept looking at the tree. They were on their tree. They were on my tree, the full branches. Mm -hmm. They didn't show up as a shared match. Eventually, one day, they showed up. Mm -hmm. They appeared for about a month or so, and then they just disappeared again. Was there a reason for that? Um, so, your, so your question is, uh, using the shared match functionality, sometimes matches show and sometimes they don't show. Didn't, didn't show. Well, we can we can look into that. I know that um, you know uh, depending on which I don't know if you have several counts, you know, several different tests on your account, but sometimes you know looking at you have to remember which count you're looking at uh, for which shared match functionality. But let's let's talk afterwards and we can dive into that because I'm not a, I'm not I haven't heard that before. Okay. Let's give a, let's see, I gave two kits out already, you two ladies. Um, I have two more kits to give out. Um, and I want to ask a question. Anybody uh, born this month? Okay, who's born today? Anybody have a birthday today? Nobody? Wait, raise your hand if you were born in March, because March is my birthday month, so I have a special connection. Okay, um, anybody, whoever's closest to my birthday will win. When's your date? Nine? 10? 27th? <gasps> winner, winner. That's my birthday. Yes. Lucky for you. Okay. Um, let's see. What else? Uh, who, who's from Utah? Okay. Who traveled from outside of Utah? Outside of the country? One? Okay. You're the winner. Another DNA kit for you. All right, awesome. So I know we have to wrap it up. So I just, if you have other questions, I'm gonna be over at the Ancestry booth. We can ask specific questions. You can always email me questions as well. But I hope this helped inspire you guys to do a little bit more with your DNA results and think of other people that you can have tested to really unlock some of those little things that you might be doing research on. All right, with that, thank you everyone. <laughs>